Good evening and welcome. Welcome to Earl of March and welcome to our virtual information session. My name is Steve Collins, the principal at Earl of March, and we want to welcome our Earl of March grade seven and eight families and a special welcome to the Katimovic grade seven and eight families and other families as well. We are looking forward to providing you with all the information you need to help you to best prepare for your grade nine year. Before we begin, uh, we would like to acknowledge that our learning is taking place on unceded and unsurrendered Algonquin territory. And we thank the Algonquin Nation for hosting us and recognize their enduring presence on this land. Before we uh, uh, get started, uh, I'd like to just uh, make a few brief words about our plan for this evening. Um, so first of all, we'll, we'll introduce a number of folks uh, to you, uh, some of whom will be uh, presenting uh, this evening. And a number of others will, will be on standby, uh, waiting in the wings to answer your questions as well. Also, we will talk quite a bit about our commitment to equity here at Earl of March. We'll explain the high school diploma requirements. Uh, we'll take a look at the grade nine course selections, including the, the grade nine course electives. And also we would like to thank you for sending in your questions uh, uh, before this evening using the uh, Google form questionnaire. Um, this form, uh, which can be used throughout this evening during our presentation, can be found in the emails that we sent to you. Uh, the, this form can also be found on the Earl of March website, on the OCDSB uh, website, and on this YouTube uh, feed channel as well. We also want to uh, remind you that this presentation is being recorded and uh, will be posted on, on the Earl of March uh, website for your reference and review. And also this slide deck will also uh, be posted on, uh, on the Earl of March website after this evening. So to begin, we would like to first introduce you to our Director of Education, Camille Williams-Taylor, who will bring greetings from the Ottawa Carleton District School Board. Starting high school is a significant milestone in a young person's journey in education. It is the time where young people can explore their interests, build on their talents, and start to envision their pathway into adulthood. The Ottawa Carleton District School Board is committed to providing a dynamic, engaging, and inclusive school experience where all students are welcome and can be successful through a robust array of exciting and supportive programs and experiences. While there are certain courses that students are required to take, there are also many options for study that students can choose depending on their interests and their plans beyond high school. We know that some students thrive in the classroom, others achieve greater success in experiential learning opportunities or in virtual spaces. In the OCDSB high schools, we work hard to help students and their families to create a learning path that works well for each student. As a district, we are committed to student achievement, well-being, and student voice through inclusive, equitable, and meaningful programs that provide students many opportunities for success. Our high schools are a place where students can come to school, be who they are, and discover who they can become. This is the time to thrive. Welcome. In continuing with our introductions, joining me on the Earl admin team are Dinu Chandy, uh, Vice Principal Dinu Chandy, who, who is uh, primarily responsible for supporting families with the last name starting from A to L, and Shelly Burnside, our other Vice Principal, who primarily supports families uh, with the surnames ending in M to Z. Also, we have nine uh, wonderful department heads uh, from our nine uh, departments. 
And they are Nancy Watsonback from the Canadian and World Studies and Humanities Department. We have Richard Grignot from Cooperative Education and Business, Scott Pemberton, Engineering and Technology Department, Leanne Horner from the English Languages and Library Department, Cynthia Wood from Fine Arts, Megan Port from Health and Physical Education, Trish Clark from Mathematics and Computer Science, Nicole Charon from Science, and Michelle Walter from Student Services and Special Education. And all of these folks are, have also uh, joined us this evening. And you'll either hear from them during the presentation or they'll be waiting in the wings, waiting for your questions that you can uh, uh, post uh, on our questionnaire. One of the predominant themes for this evening is our ongoing commitment to equity at Earl of March. And you will hear many examples of how we have uh, looked at how best serve our students by removing barriers and prov providing a wide range of opportunities for our students to grow and to be successful. Diversity is our strength at Earl of March. When we consider the, the students that we serve, 65 different birth countries are represented at Earl of March. 26% of our students were not born in Canada. 63 different first languages are spoken at home. And for 58% of our school population, the first language spoken at home is not English. So many opportunities to embrace this impressive diversity at Earl of March. So many opportunities for our students to make connections with our school, our programs of study, and the curriculum that we offer in our classrooms. Over to Vice Principal Burnside, Shelley. Thank you, Mr. Collins, uh, and welcome everybody. Uh, the commitment to equity is central uh, to all of our efforts. And a couple of examples of this at Earl of March are the compulsory course of contemporary indigenous studies in grade 11 and the project last fall, which was so dynamic and wonderful. It was a collaborative cross-curricular drum building assembling, decorating, and playing success. We also are committed to supporting all of our students at the Earl of March, and we commit to this in many ways, including a very strong uh, supported Rainbow Club and uh, launching next year of all gender physical education classes. At Earl of March, we are pleased to have two multicultural liaison officers. And as Mr. Collins noted, many diverse uh, origins and languages being spoken at Earl of March and at the homes of our community. And uh, they, the multi liaison officers can help directly with communication between staff and families. We also have a teacher who works directly with our English language learners and provides resources and ideas and plans and supports uh, all of our teachers and students at Earl of March. Special education is very near and dear to my heart. Uh, and we have three specialized program classes in our Earl community of learners. We support our students in regular program classes through our learning support teachers, our resource support, individual education plans, and we also uh, hold transition meetings specifically designed to bridge the move from grade eight to grade nine uh, for any student, for all students. We have many pathways and options to serve all our learners and our guidance counselors are experts at working with students and families to find the right pathway to success for every student. And now Mr. Chandy, my VP colleague. Thank you, Ms. Burnside. Um, Earl of March and the OCDSB strive to offer engaging pathways for all learners with supports for students to become collaborative, creative, critical thinkers and stewards in a dynamic global environment. It's important for students to connect their learning to their life and to their pathway goals. Educators strive to create authentic, meaningful tasks to engage students in our day-to-day -day classes. Furthermore, there are a wide range of additional experiential learning programming options available for students. 
These opportunities provide different learning experiences, allowing students to build unique skills, gain work experience, earn specialized certifications, or even begin earning college credits while still in high school. Through continuing education, there are opportunities beyond the traditional school day where students can earn credits or get additional support. These additional programs may run in the summer, after school, or in the evenings. As you can see here, there are a wide range of opportunities and pathways to graduation for students. These opportunities allow students to tailor their high school experience to shape their growth and achieve their goals. And at this time, I will invite Ms. Walter back uh, to, to speak to the next section. Hi, I'm gonna walk you through the nuts and bolts of course selection at Earl of March. The OCDSB um, has a pathway for all students. Some students do a 30 credit Ontario Secondary School Diploma, others do an Ontario Secondary School Certificate, and other students, uh, some other students do a Certificate of Accomplishment, which are non, is in our non-credit pathway. Most students at Earl are completing their Ontario Secondary School Diploma, where they have 18 compulsory credits and 12 optional credits. How do you know what courses to select? This guide suggests who you could speak with, provides some questions for you to consider, and connects you with additional information and resources, all designed to help you make these decisions. There are four pillars. Know yourself, explore opportunities, goal set, achieve goals, and transition work. And do, your, do our students do this all on their own? Of course not. They have many people to help them. They have their parents, their teachers, other trusted adults uh, to consult around these important decisions. In the OCDSB, we use an online platform called Zello to help students explore career opportunities and build learning skills. I'm gonna play a couple of videos for you. The first one's a quick introduction to Zello and the second one looks at Zello from a student's perspective. An engaged student is a successful student. It's as simple as that. You've got some kids saying, I know where I'm going, just show me how to get there. And then you have students who don't think there's anywhere for them to go. You have to be able to support both of those students and everybody in between. Get them to take a real look at themselves and see what that means for their future. When you say to students, to any student, your life is not a one-size-fits-all thing. Let's take a look at who you are and how you learn and what interests you and figure out where that can take you. And let's map out how you can get there. You're giving these kids a real reason to care. They see just how much possibility is out there. That's when the switch flips and a student realizes they have a hand in their own destiny. And that changes how a student's gonna view school and learning and their whole story. There is a difference in test scores, in attendance, is this positive culture around academics. Proof you can point to and say, these kids have the confidence to tackle the next step, whatever that might be. What happens when students are investing in themselves, it's remarkable. Zello helps students build a roadmap to a successful future using a variety of interactive, engaging activities. Let's start with the first page students see when signing in, the dashboard. This is a summarized view of your student's activity in Zello. From here, they quickly access things such as lessons, assessments, assignments you've created, and resources you've uploaded. It can be accessed again by clicking the Zello logo at the top left of any page. 
Lessons are the first thing on the dashboard. Zellomade Lessons are a series of fully interactive, personalized learning experiences that help students build the skills and knowledge they need to become future ready. Students learn about these critical concepts like decision making, different learning pathways, work-life balance, and career demand. For any topics outside of Zello's ready-made lessons, your district may create additional lessons for students to complete. These custom lessons can also be linked to activities within Zello. From the top menu, students access About Me, where they express their personality by celebrating their achievements and experiences and recording their interests and skills. As they build their self-knowledge skills, the storyboard is a central hub to collect their inspiration or work they're proud of, such as their best schoolwork, hobbies, and favorite media. The About Me page is also where they'll find Zello's assessments. Here, students reflect on their desired skills and favorite interests and how it all connects to their future options. With Explore Options, students start learning about careers, universities, or programs. The careers list is sorted by the strength of the match for each career based on their assessment results. Students see exactly where their match came from by clicking Find Out Why in the career profile. Career profiles include crucial information such as work environment, earnings, and education pathways in careers. And school profiles will include enrollment, campus environment, and virtual campus tours. The heart at the top of profiles and next to their avatar is where students save and reference all of their favorite ones. Under goals and plans, Students use the course planner and saved options to plan what they'll do after high school. Because every student's future is unique, they can begin their plan with a career, a university, or with a saved program. Students create their personal high school program of study using course planner. This tool incorporates students' course history and automatically checks for things like prerequisites. This way, they can make sure they're on track to graduate and achieve any specializations or endorsements they're working towards. As students work hard at building their self-knowledge, exploring their options, and building their plans, they can share their Zello profile using the share link at the top of About Me. Follow along with your students' work in your educator tools and get first-hand experience with all of these features by trying it out in your demo account. Then feel confident knowing you're helping your students hone their tools for future success. Sorry about that. So how do you log into Zello? Um, it's quite easy. There are verbal instructions here, but I'm gonna show you the pictorial instructions. You enter, students enter via the student portal. They log in using their OCDSB uh, login information. They go to the grade nine, uh, sorry, grade seven to 12 tiles here and into the Zello. So what are our next steps in terms of course selection? When we uh, know exactly when things are gonna start, um, we will let you know. Um, so we have to, there'll be a course selection start date. There'll be um, some courses workshops within grade eight classes that are run to help with how to use Zello and some advice on course selection from grade eight staff. And then there'll be a, a course selection a close date that we will advise you of. There's usually weeks in between the, the opening and the closing of the course selection. All schools in the OCDSB are committed to ensuring pathways for all students. Parents can speak to school administration, teachers, and guidance teams to discuss course options for their child. Some students might take all their courses in one pathway, while others might choose courses in a variety of pathways, given varied interests, 
and abilities. Course types. We have about five different course types and uh, you can see that they're all differentiated by the last uh, character in the course code. So open courses are for everybody and they are delineated by the O. The number here, the second last one, the number one means that they're grade nine courses. W is our new course code. And that tells us that it is a de-streamed course. We have currently one de-streamed course and it's the math course, the grade nine math that has replaced the academic math and the applied math. L stands for a locally developed course. And we have a couple of those courses, a math course and an English course in grade nine. P stands for an applied level course and D stands for an academic course looking to find the best fit for students in terms of learning style, course pace and course volume will be the biggest factors in determining which course um, your student or child will take. Now, what should you consider? Well, I think the most important thing is that given that the, the transition from grade eight to nine is complicated in itself, although many students are, do it quite easily, um, we want to make sure that our youth are being set up um, in their course selection to be successful when they come to high school. So how do you figure out which course is the best for them? Well, speaking to your youth's current staff member is a really good way, or staff members are a really good way to figure out um, which course to take. If your youth has a special circumstance or a special learning need, advocate for them. Reach out to the high school staff, speak to their current um, staff members to try and figure out what is the best course in which they will be successful. We often show this slide in order to, because we're asked what, what does, what compulsory courses, what's the pathway through grade nine to 12. So you need four, this shows the most common pathway. There are deviate, there are iterate, different iterations. Um, as you can see, you take English across all grades, mathematics at least across three. And as you go down in the grade nine uh, column, um, science is compulsory, Canadian geography is compulsory, French is compulsory, uh, phys ed is highly recommended. There's an arts that we recommend, and then you can take an elective as the last course. As I said, in grade nine, the compulsory courses are an English, so that's either the essential level, the applied level, or the academic level, the mathematics, which is a choice between the essential level or the new de-streamed math, the science, which is a choice between uh, applied and academic, and we have three options for health and physical education, the girls phys ed, the boys phys ed, and the all gendered phys ed this year. What are our grade 11 elective options? We have several in the arts, fine arts category, drama, music, visual arts, and dance. We have the option in business to take information and communication technology uh, in either English language or in French language. Uh, we can take uh, the exploring technologies course. And we've added a new option this year, the learning strategies course. A couple of special notes when uh, thinking about taking electives. Um, there are no prerequisite for grade 10 courses for the arts, business, and technology. Band and music are co-curricular. So you would take a one credit music course and add a half a credit of band that's delivered outside the timetable. And when choosing learning strategies, there's the option of taking um, the GLS 1.0 or the GLE 1.0. The GLE 1.0 is for students who have um, uh, IEPs. If you choose to take both of those courses, only one credit is granted. So French. French is a little more complicated, so we thought we'd go through the four options with you. FIF1D is the course code for French immersion students, and they should, if you, they should be the only students taking that course. They should have been taking it all the way through school. FSF1D is the academic core French, and that's for students who have been in the core French program, who have studied French since grade three, and who may wish to continue their study of French in grade 10. This course is taught in French. The third option is FSF1P, 
and it's the Applied Core French course. It's for students who have studied French since grade three and do not wish to continue in French in grade 10. This course is taught in English. FSF 1O is the last option and it's an open core, core French course and it's for beginners to the language of French. It's for students who are new to French or who began their study of French after grade three. And this course is taught in English. Health and Physical Education Grade 9 Options. The Grade 9 Health and Active Living course is offered in a few forms. The Grade, the grade 9 Girls HPE, the Grade 9 Boys HPE, and the new All Gendered Grade 9 HPE, which is open to students of any gender identity or expression. We also have a program that we call SPARK, nicknamed SPARK, it's Ignite the Spark. Um, it is an evidence-based uh, program. The evidence suggests that 30 minutes of physical activity uh, enhances cognitive performance um, and enhances good behavior uh, or positive behavior. So the students who do well in SPARK uh, often have gaps in their math knowledge um, and they often present with attentional challenges. So if you think this program is good for you or for your child or youth, uh, in Zello, there is an interest flag that you can choose um, and it's titled Spark. So please do that and we will reach out to you to discuss those options. So everyone is very excited about our new mathematics course. It's sort of hot off the press. Um, it's de-streamed, so it replaces our academic uh, math, our former academic math and our former applied math courses. Um, it's a new curriculum and it's a continuation of the 2020 elementary math curriculum. And we are waiting um, excitedly to hear more about uh, what that means. I think that the rollout will be pretty soon. Uh, there is one other additional math option, the MAT1L. It's the essential math level and it's uh, usually students who have gaps in their learning or who have modified uh, expectations in grade seven and eight, uh, we see taking that course. The new learning strategies uh, course that was mentioned is um, called Skills for Success in Secondary School, the course code's GLS 1.0. It helps students become better, more independent learners. It helps students build confidence and motivation to pursue opportunities for success in secondary school and beyond. And it fosters development in several areas, including literacy, numeracy, personal management skills, and interpersonal and teamwork skills. Band and music are co-curricular courses, as we mentioned. Um, music can be taken on its own, but in order to take band, you have to take music. Music is one credit, band is half a credit. Uh, unfortunately, at this time, you can't choose uh, band in Zello. So after March break, those who have chosen music will be contacted by their guidance counselors about potentially taking band and adding it to their courses. So now I'd like to introduce you to three of our department heads who are going to explain a little more about some of the um, uh, elective options that you have in grade nine. Richard Grignon is gonna go first. He's the business uh, head. Scott Pemberton is the head of engineering technology and Cynthia Wood is the head of fine arts. Richard. Hello everyone. I'll be talking about the BTT 1.0 or 1.0F business communication technologies. Next slide. So what do you learn about? The first thing we emphasize is digital citizenship. That means how you act online. We talk about privacy, security, online presence, legal and ethical issues when it comes to being a digital citizen. The next big part of it is business concepts. 
It is the, also the introduction to the grade 10 course, which talks about marketing, sales, finance, entrepreneurship, and CSR, which is corporate social responsibility. The third point, design thinking and prototyping. This is a huge component of the course now where we wanna make this course as authentic as possible. Make it so that students feel like they're solving a real world problem. And so they go through the whole design thinking process where they empathize with the client, they try to find solution for the client, they define the, the prototype they wanna build, they ideate, they create the prototype and test and bring it back to the client. And this is throughout the semester. And finally, the last uh, part that we work with is web development. Next slide, please. Now, what do you learn in the course? Most of your youths have already been introduced to Google Apps. However, we show them how to use them all appropriately. We give them the proper tools to manipulate them so that it's to their maximum advantage, like Google Docs and Slides and Forms and Google My Maps. We even show them how to organize their Google Drive so that it's easy for them to find their files and to work with their files online. We do desktop publishing as well using Lucid Press. They get to play with photo editing tools such as Pixlr. We do video, video editing tools with WeVideo. They do a large section in spreadsheets and databases. We've introduced them to de data visualization tools such as Google Fusion Tables and Data Studio. And finally, uh, 3D design and printing. So once they've created the product in Tinkercad, students will actually get to 3D print their product and test it out to make sure that it works and that the client is happy with the result. Next slide, please. What can you earn if you are an immersion student? You can earn an immersion credit taking the BTT 10F. We've also included volunteer hours because we strongly encourage students to begin accumulating their volunteer hours in grade nine, since you need to have 40 hours to graduate. How do we do this? With the tools they've learned in this course, we have different programs available for them to do after school. One is Cyber Seniors, where they actually go out and help seniors with their own technology. And they gain hours doing that. In other parts, we do also fundraising for caring and sharing. And the students are responsible for creating the posters, a website, and come up with an innovative idea to fundraise money for caring and sharing. More importantly, this course offers transferable skills. You will use what you learn for every course in your secondary academic career and beyond. And that's why I added Buzz Lightyear because everything you learn in this course, you will learn from infinity and beyond. And this will continue your growth. What are the benefits? As uh, taking that business course in grade nine, uh, we introduce students to the Business Specialist High Skill Major Program, which is a senior program. However, when students take the grade nine course, they're already, they already have a leg up in knowing how the program will work. And we also encourage them as a grade nine business student to be a part of the JA Company After School Program. Now, this is a program that runs every Wednesday, three hours a night and students from grade 9 to 12 actually create a real company and they do everything from building a prototype, creating that product, selling the product, marketing the product, financing, all of it. So it's a really great program. Uh, they, it will help with, like I said, with every other course uh, that they will take throughout high school. It links to business photography and media courses, and it prepares you for 
any type of career, whether in business, in engineering, in science, because of ICE. ICE stands for innovation, creativity, and entrepreneurship. And I will say, it prepares you for life. And I believe at this point, I'm handing the baton over to Mr. Pemberton. Hello, good evening. It's <laughs> it's always interesting following Mr. Grignoff. He's he's uh, so enthusiastic. I always uh, end up wanting to take his course, but uh, that's not my purpose here tonight. My purpose is to introduce you to my department, which is the Department of Engineering and Technology, and to talk about our course offering that we have available in grade nine. Next slide. So the the Engineering and Technology course that we have is called Exploring Technology, and the course code is TIJ. One O, so it's an open course, uh, open to all students, and it's quite unique. Uh, this is an opportunity for kids to look at skills and uh, equipment, materials, and and things that unfortunately are not available anymore in the you know uh, kindergarten to grade eight program. Uh, but this is where it all begins, and this is this is sort of the pathway for STEM oriented kids, the science, technology, engineering, and math student. Next slide, please. So when I say, what's the course about and, and who's it for? I, I genuinely say it's for everyone. This is for students that are not just science and tech type people. These are for students that perhaps are very artistic and they're looking for avenues to express that creativity in a new venue or to uh, look at you know the latest in computing technology and artificial intelligence, engineering students, uh, students uh, interested in communication, video production, and music, and so on. Um, we have an awful lot of technology in this program. Uh, we, we have a lot of CNC work, computer numeric control, uh, with the CAD CAM CNC process. We do 3D printing, we do plasma cutting, um, a wide variety of, of metalworking. Um, we do an awful lot of design work. And of course, we also have a traditional woodworking shop the students get to go into, as well as a traditional metalworking shop where they get to try out some welding. Next slide, please. So even though it's 2021 and you know, the times have changed a lot, I still get the question, is this course for boys? And is there a different course for girls? And I just think, oh man, you know, it's time to stop thinking like that. Uh, it, it is absolutely not in any way a gender or or anything specific course this course is for everyone everyone is welcome now there are additional opportunities just like with the btt course uh the tij course there are there are additional opportunities for kids to take the skills that they're learning and apply them in community type settings and and competitions so for example um, the school has a first robotics uh, team that was put together by students and the senior students every year, they run the uh, competition, if you will, to fill all the positions that we have available each year, because we do have to limit the size of the team. It's, it's just sort of part of the way the FRC works. So um, obviously students that are taking the TIJ 10 course do have um, uh, sort of the preferential skill set that we're looking for, you know, that design, that, the, all the, the function with the tools and the, the programming and so forth. So FRC is a great opportunity. Um, certainly a lot of scholarship opportunities associated with it. And um, for a lot of our students that are looking at the University of Waterloo, if you look into this, you will see that uh, University of Waterloo offers preferential admission for students that have first experience. Another opportunity for students uh, particularly the TIJ students that, again, would have the experience and uh, the knowledge for this, is our electric vehicle team. And as electric vehicles are increasingly becoming the norm and, and the path forward, this is an opportunity for students to get in, get hands-on experience with the electronics, the, the mechanical construction, uh, all the software and everything involved. And we compete in a University of Waterloo electric vehicle challenge event every year with the exception unfortunately of course of this year with the COVID restrictions. So again we would we would encourage our grade nine students to apply to join the electric vehicle team. There are a lot more opportunities. 
Uh, Earl of March has two Schism programs, the Specialist High Skills Major. And you've heard Mr. Grignon speak about the business entrepreneurship one. And we have another one in manufacturing engineering. So I do have some links here. So when you're looking at the slide deck on the Earl of March website, these links will take you to more information on these programs. And the Specialist High Skills Major, which I happen to run myself, um, I'm very proud of this. The students do a wonderful job with it. And it's excellent preparation for their post-secondary uh, pathways of choice. We also um, are quite in a unique position. Earl of March is the only high school in Canada that has an ongoing working relationship with a volunteer organization called the Tetra Society. And what they do is design and construct uh, assistive devices for community members that have uh, physical disabilities, uh, oftentimes disabilities where commercially available devices don't quite work. They just don't quite do what that person requires. So it's a really super opportunity for our students to get involved, uh, meet the client, uh, develop, develop some ideas, run them past experienced engineers from Tetra. And uh, again, uh, you know, prototype it and put it forward to a final process. It's been just so successful so far. Last but not least, we also offer engineer in residence which is a program that the Professional Engineers of Ontario has put together, where we partner with an engineer in the community every year. We do run this through senior courses. Um, however, again, starting in grade nine, you're getting exposure to this. And our goal is to really help kids explore things that they've never had the opportunity to see before in school and, 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 and sort of give better context and better experience for their their choices as they look forward to their future careers. And by doing this uh, you know, community outreach and community organization involvement, we feel that that's really, really beneficial for our kids. And I, you heard me mention STEM before. We, we genuinely believe that STEM begins with the TIJ course, whether your student is, is interested in the computer sciences or computer engineering, uh, communication technology, uh, wants to be a designer, an engineer, uh, you know, it's quite boundless. And this is just a, a wonderful gateway course to all the things that STEM has to offer. Next slide, please. And last but not least, I put some more links in here. Um, I think to, to really get a grasp on what the grade nine course opens the doors to, uh, I, and, I, and I acknowledge, of course, that we don't have a prerequisite to our grade 10 courses. However, um, you know, for the kid wanting to try some stuff out and, and maybe make better selections in grade 10, um, I've put here uh, some information that they can go through and you can go through, uh, looking at the programs that we offer through grades 10 to 12, where the engineering and technology offerings become specialized, much like science becomes biology and chemistry and physics, ours becomes um, uh, technological design, communication technology, computer engineering, and manufacturing engineering. We do have a, a, a school board provided technology certificate uh, that involves earning a number of credits that start with an I code, such as the computer sciences, or T for any of the engineering and technology courses. And all the requirements and available courses that we offer at Earl of March, you can see them through this link. And last but not least, I've already spoken to this, our Manufacturing Engineering Specialist High Skills Major. There's a link here with some information um, that talks about the, the bundle of courses that a student can put together, uh, along with what other requirements are necessary to earn this. And it is quite the mark of distinction for the student graduating. Um, the Ontario government provides um, a different, uh, um, um, what am I trying to say here, diploma. So in addition to the standard diploma that all students will get upon earning their OSSD. This one includes a uh, red seal on the front page. And the second page is a listing of all the certifications that the student has earned through the Schism program. And that applies for both the manufacturing engineering one and the business technology. So I will hand the baton off again to Miss Cynthia Wood, who is the head of fine arts. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello everyone. Earl of March offers a wide range of fine arts programs. On this slide, you will find a link to the fine arts website where there is updated and elaborate information on all courses and extracurriculars in the arts. Now I'll speak directly to our future grade nine students. 
For your recommended art credit, you can choose from dance, drama, music, or visual art. You can fulfill your art credit in either the grade nine or the grade 10 year. Next slide, please. The grade nine dance class will introduce you to dance technique and how to follow choreography. You'll gain confidence, be physically active, and work with others to create dance creations leading towards a final dance showcase featuring all grade levels. Next, please. The grade nine drama class will help you develop your public speaking, social, and group skills. You will build your confidence as you learn acting voice and movement strategies. Drama also introduces you to technical theater, such as lighting, sound, costume, and makeup design and operation. Next, please. Earl of March offers an improv team, an annual full stage musical production, an AV club, and various talent shows, such as Coffee House and Arts Gala. You can click on the links in the slide to learn more about each area. Next, please. By taking music in grade nine, you will be creating memories, building leadership and team skills, and learning music literacy. Next. Grade nine instrumental music class is a full credit course that can be taken alone or with the repertoire concert band class. The band class is a half credit course, meets two times a week after school, and will have anywhere between 30 to 80 students working together on their music repertoire. In order to take band, you must enroll in the instrumental music class. And please note that when enrolling in Zello, the AMR band course will not show up on the list. But once you enroll in the instrumental music course, you will get an email to sign up for band. Next, please. Music also offers concert attendance and performance, competition at Music Fest, and an annual band trip. You can click on the link in this slide for more information on these extra opportunities. Next. Grade nine visual art class will introduce you to the basics of sketching, painting, and sculpting. This course will challenge your creativity as you learn the techniques of art and design. I click on the link for student art pieces and more information. Next, please. During this pandemic, teachers of the fine arts recognize the importance of balance and creativity in a time of isolation. We continue our exploration and education of the fine arts, providing positive outlets and pathways for our students, including a fine arts certificate. Thank you for your time. Back to you, Ms. Walter. Thanks, everybody. I wanted to provide a little more information on our advanced placement courses because we often get a lot of questions about them. What is advanced placement? The College Board's advanced placement program offers a capable and motivated students the opportunity to study university level content within the secondary school setting. This program has been in existence since 1955 and is very successful. Students who score well on advanced placement examinations are granted credit by most universities in North America. AP courses follow the ministry curriculum and also provide extra learning to prepare students for a college board AP exam. Students write the course exam and, and can choose whether or not to write the AP exam for university credit. Earl of March offers advanced placement courses beginning in grade 11 and continuing grade 12. No action is needed for grade 9 and 10. Further information about AP at Earl is available on the school website. So course selection changes. We all often get a lot of questions about this. And how we answer is, now is the time to put your thinking cap on about what courses you really want to take in September. Um, changes aren't impossible, um, but they are considered under exceptional circumstances only and may require approval from uh, the school administration. More information uh, can be found on graduation requirements, community involvement hours, AP courses offered at Earl of March, uh, Earl of March uh, schisms, and Earl of March certificates. Uh, over to you, Mr. Collins. 
Thank you very much. And um, before we conclude our presentation for this evening, uh, Vice Principal Burnside, are there any remaining questions that need to be answered on our questionnaire? Thank you, Mr. Collins. Uh, we had a few questions. I've been monitoring the, uh, the form that was, uh, uh, the link was at, on our website, uh, along with the link to this presentation. And uh, you can, of course, at any time, contact the school directly to ask questions. Uh, there were some questions about transportation and all transportation uh, questions, for example, will I get a school bus? Will there be costs? And there is no cost for transportation to the Ottawa, uh, to, our, to our school, um, but the Ottawa School Transportation Authority or OSTA, whose website uh, can be searched in Google, it's ottawaschoolbus.ca and they have all the information there and you can contact them directly with any specific questions about transportation to your address. Uh, there were some very specific questions about textbook course requirements. Um, I want to uh, let people know that uh, these will be addressed by individual departments and teachers. Um, there's inf information about all sorts of things as Ms. Welter pointed out about advanced placement courses and exams, our music programs, clubs, contests, as well as many other topics, including extracurricular activities when those are available to us again after we get out of this COVID uh, situation. And our website is where you will find a lot of that information. Uh, there were some questions about specialized programs, including gifted programs. Um, and that information is available on the Ottawa Carleton District School Board website, which is ocdsb.ca, and any specialized programs and the application process for that, uh, for those programs, uh, that information is available there at the Ottawa Carleton District School Board website. Uh, we will commence as soon as we are able uh, our course selection visits from our guidance team to all our grade eight classes, including our Katimovic grade eight classes. And uh, that will be more individual question answering, more uh, guided process through the Zello uh, experience and, and creating your course selections for next year. And the last question that was there um, on, the, on the chat tonight was uh, regarding attendance at Earl of March in particular and all schools attendance at any school in Ontario is dependent on your home address so you can find um, your home school in the Ottawa Carleton District School Board by going to our uh, Ottawa Carleton District School Board website and searching for the school locator tool if you enter your address and the program that you're interested in in that school locator tool then you'll be able to find your home school and based on your address, and then you contact them to find out information about transfer or applying for transfer. And that's it. Thank you very much. And moving forward, if you have any questions at all, and I know this is mentioned a few times, but if you have any questions, uh, you've thought about things, and I know we've provided with, with you with a lot of information over the last hour, but if you have any questions at all, feel free to call us at the school uh, 613-592-3361, or you can email us. All of our emails are on the Earl of March uh, website. We encourage you to do that uh, as well. So on behalf of all of the Earl of March staff, I, I want to thank you for joining us and we are really looking forward to seeing you in person very soon. Thanks again, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs>